Hey, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome back. This is Ola coming to you live. If you if you're first time here, be sure you click subscribe. Make sure if I say anything that makes sense to you, you click that thumbs up like button. Make sure it lit blue. And let's have some fun. I'm gonna make some calls, nothing specific today. Yes, the title is seven questions, wholesale real estate code calling script. All right. Um I'm gonna share that with you, okay? But the first thing first, you know. Today uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a few follow-ups, you know, and then see if we can get some people on the phone. And then in between, I'll share with you what those seven questions are. I do have another video where we uh, cover this in a little bit of uh, more details. All you have to do is search seven systems, uh, cold calling system, all our talks. I'll be doing search for that on Google. Uh, it should come right up. All right. So with that being said, I'm gonna make the first call. And then, uh, and then we'll take you from there. The seven questions that I ask is actually right in front of me because it's the same one that my code callers, my VAs use to pre-qualify these calls for me before I have to get on the phone with them, all right? Now, maybe you don't start that same way. Maybe you start making that call yourself, you know? Uh, basically, it's completely um, up to you. So let's take a look here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, you've reached Mark Kulak at 419 All right. So I don't leave a voicemail. Basically, what I do is if I can get them on the phone, I set up a follow up and then I'll come back to it uh, later. Okay. So just so you know, we just, we just keep following up indefinitely. That's our practice now. Let's see here. Just sent it. Okay. Somebody's sending a proof of funds. All right. So let's go on to the next one. So we, um, the first question is, um, is making sure we're talking to the right person. Okay. Obviously you want to make sure you're talking to the right person. A lot of time you will find that, um, you know, maybe the wife, the husband, the spouse, the children, uh, pick up the phone. You just want to make sure you're talking to the right person because it's basically pointless to be talking to the wrong person. Now, sometimes uh, the exception is people will outright tell you that, yeah, you could talk to me about it. If they say that, then feel free to talk to them about it because that's all still prospecting. But that's the first question. Hello, is John available? That's the first question. <laughs> okay. That's the first question, believe it or not. So that b brings us down to where's the last six questions, right? Let me try to call Ariel, Ariel, and see if we can get this person on the phone in Long Branch, New Jersey. Hello. Hi, may I speak to Ariel, please? Who's My name is Ola. I'm looking to speak to Ariel. Yes. Hi, how, you, you? how you doing, sir? Uh, you spoke to my assistant maybe um, yesterday, I'm not sure, about your property in Long Branch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you you expressed that you were interested in an uh, offer, right? Uh, potentially. Oh, potential. So you're not looking to sell, basically. Uh, well, I told them we got somewhere over eight hundred. We potentially would sell. Over eight hundred thousand dollars. Let me take a quick look here. Uh, what's the property worth? Uh, I would say somewhere in that area. Oh, okay. Okay. Why do you want to sell it? Excuse me? Why do you want to sell it? For the right number, we would sell it. Oh, okay. Want to, for the right number, we would sell it. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's a fit. Do you have any other property you need to get rid of? I don't need to get rid of anything now. All right. Have a good day. All right. So, basically... On Friday here, I'm going to be training our co-callers a little bit further to make sure they pre-qualify these people properly. Um, this person is not looking to sell, you know, and uh, 
he doesn't want to sell. He doesn't. There's no way how you cut it and dice it. Uh, not interested. <laughs> okay, gotta keep it moving to the next one as soon as possible. The only thing is, I always make sure I ask the last question, which is not part of the prospecting question. It's part of the add-on question. I call it the add-on question. So, for example, an add-on question would be how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. Those are questions that you that allows you to dig deeper into the conditions of a property. So, speaking of, of condition, the second question is, I'm calling about blah, 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 123 Main Street. Is that yours? That's the second question. You want to make sure that they own the property, right? You want to make sure that they own the property. So, let's see here. Mm, here you go. Schedule appointment, not interested. All right. So you want to make sure they own the property. That's the second question. Let me go ahead and call uh, Ramesh for East Hanover, New Jersey. All right. So watch me i'm actually going to use those two questions the first two questions right now the next person i get on the line of course i'm going to attempt to use use that all right do, 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 do. Is three. All right, so let me see. Look at six five oh two. You have reached Nina. All right, so. No one picked up there. Let's call the second line. Where's the third question? The third question after we make sure that, after we make sure that we're speaking to some of the right property is to ask them, would you like a cash offer on that property? So you've made sure that they own the property. Uh, would you like a cash offer on that property? All right, so the second line is a non-working number. I get to delete that off my record. And let's try the other one here. All right, so I'm looking at this lead right here. They wanna hear the offer for no one is leaving the property right away. Excellent condition. Hmm. And suspecting, uh, suspecting a little foul play here, but we'll get through it. not being filled out copy paste you gotta stay on top of your you have to stay on top of your virtual assistants okay um, many of them will you know many of them will try to play you okay for example I'm noticing uh, similar trends in how they fill out the forms okay the form they're supposed to fill out as they make these calls and i'm noticing that and we have to call that out before it gets too far just so they know that you're paying attention you have to have at every level you are in this business you have to uh, put something we call um quality control okay you have to have quality control at every level doesn't matter if you're a newbie doesn't matter, you know, if you're savvy, doesn't matter if you're making $20 million a year, you need to have, if you want to keep making it and not go down, you definitely need to make sure you have 
quality control as part of your process. No matter how big the company is out there, refineries, industries, everyone has quality control because the idea is to stay in business. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, so this person did not pick up. Let's go ahead and mark it as no answer and then we'll follow up when we get a chance. All right, but we don't discard them, we do follow up. Okay, the only reason why we discard somebody is somebody straight up tells us that they're not interested. Okay, that's the only way. All right, so we will always schedule a follow up indefinitely. We used to do three follow ups, and that's it. But we've added some resources, so we can follow up. For, and follow up is one of the one of our biggest money makers. So we always make sure we follow up. The fourth question is condition. All right, and uh, and follow up for each one of these seven questions. There can be follow up questions, like follow up questions or digging deeper questions. For example, conditions. Inside of conditions, you listen. You say, "What's the condition? Does it need any kind of repairs?" Or you say that this house doesn't need any repair. Okay, how many bedrooms? How many bathroom? Basically, those are all part of what's the condition, and that is what I call step four or the fourth question. Simply say, what's the condition? Does it need any kind of repairs? How much repairs are we talking? So tell me how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms does this, does this property have? Okay. And they, they'll tell you. And not only that, they'll tell you more. And basically, you just want to take note of anything they're saying that will be useful for you during negotiations. And is this same information that you will use as ammunitions to sell the property if you do need to sell it later or anything like that okay but these are at the point you'll be making uh taking notes okay you'll be gathering your data at this point okay let's see here let's go to the next person here let's call lino okay uh, Yes, I am. I speak to Lino, please. Yes, I am. How you doing? My name is uh, Ola. I, you spoke to my assistant about your property in uh, Mayersville. Okay. Did I catch you at a good time? Yeah, I'm not there. I'm not home. Oh, you're not home. It sounds like you do, it's not a property you need to sell either. Yeah, I need to sell it. Oh, you need to sell it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do, do you want me to call you back or you could I could get you some information in like 30 seconds? Uh, well, you got the information uh, because it's in, a, it's in real estate. Uh. Oh, it's listed right now? The property is listed? No, no, it's not listed, but it was listed before. Oh, it was listed. Oh, okay. Well, what, are you, what are you asking for the property? It's 375. Oh, you're asking 375. Let me see what I got here. Because I was looking to make an, uh, an offer on the property. It's vacant right now, right? Yeah, it's vacant. It's vacant right now? Okay. Let me see here. What do you think the property is worth? Huh? What do you think the property is worth on today's market? This is this is this is a uh, is in Gilad. It's a piece of property. It's in Gilad, yes, in Gilad. Yeah, and I I got a I got some uh, plans already to build a house. I got a permit to knock down the, that the house there. Oh, okay. And so, the problem is, uh, in the future, you could be able to two houses there. Oh, so it's two plots. No, no, is is uh, is one. It's gotta be so so divided. Okay, it's one and it's big enough. Okay. Yeah, it's one point ninety four or ninety six. Okay, all right. Let me see. But we have plans, uh, you know, ready to go in the city to be approved. Okay. And the, the, you know, it's all made, you know, just to do an extra property. Okay. Those, all those measurements. Okay. Well, why didn't you do the project? Uh, well, I'm not doing it because we bought this for my daughter. 
you and, uh, she's she's gonna move out of the state and uh, we stop oh okay you stopped okay the, yeah. the project you were gonna do on it how much was it gonna cost to do it yeah uh i don't know this ballpark ballpark yeah you know this is a depend if you give it to somebody else or if you do it by yourself yeah, I'm an investor. For the most part, I do it by myself. But when I say do it by myself, I don't mean I'm handling the hammers, you know. So that's that's what I'm asking. Well, how much did you budget for it to to do to build the house? To build the house? Mm -hmm. I don't have no idea because when we we bought it, we not we just gonna build it. You know, we're not gonna. You said you were gonna knock it down, right? Yeah. The it's to knock them down, it's expired, but they could be renewed. Yeah, but how long ago was the permit? It's a year ago, more than a year. More than a year ago. Okay, let me just see. Yeah, but Go ahead. Yeah, I could choose, you know, if, if I, I could give you some, uh, I got some paperwork, I could give you some copies, you know, like a small print. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. As soon as uh, what I'm trying to do is look at the numbers and see what we can go under contract for. I am looking at the, I'm looking at the property in there right now. Uh, yeah, would you? you know? Yeah, uh, no, no, not at the property. I'm looking at the information I have on oh, the. Information, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see the picture too. I see that is. Uh, yeah. I can see the property. So, so let me ask you: Would you, would you accept two seventy five? All cash. No. no. What's the lowest? What's the lowest you will go? Uh, because I pay, uh, no, I pay a lot more. Oh, you paid a lot more, right? Let me see. Yeah, I, I live across the street. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah 2016. I see that you paid uh, 232. So, what's the what's the lowest you would you would accept? Mm -hmm. 365. That's it? That's like $10,000. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. This is, is, is a big property. And uh, if, I, if I'm available to building it, I know I'm going to make money. But yeah. I, don't know, I don't want to do it. I'm uh, mm -hmm. too old already for this. Yeah. Right. So what I'm, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the sales in the area in the last six months, right? And uh, the highest I see here is, uh, you know, just so you know that I'm I'm serious, you know, the highest I see is uh, I see a 755, I see a 735, I see a 701, I see a 568, I see a 680, and these are all uh, fully renovated houses, as you can imagine, right? So when I estimated your house, which is uh, 2,278 square foot, the one that's in there right now, the knockdown, the, the property is probably around 615, right? If I fix it, you know? But even if that, I don't... That, that probably is uh, the one way to make money there. Mm -hmm. it, it's like that one. It, it, you make another one in the side, like we got the project for. You say what? You know, this, the the only thing to make money there mm -hmm. is is uh, is building uh, the first one, mm -hmm. and then see, you know, make the sub so so the video. Oh, like do like do a subdivision on the property. Yeah, to do another one. Knock knock it down they, and do a subdivision. Of, of building that one, it mm -hmm. keeps the, the big lot. How how's, how big is the lot? The lot is, uh, I think it's 1.94 or 96. 1.94 acres. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you if you accept uh, 350, I'm, I'm going to send you a contract. I'm going to put it on a contract. 350? Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to be based on, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the possibility of subdivision, right? Uh -huh. Uh, based on the present size of the property, I'm looking at the potentials here, okay? But I want to send you a contract. I want to put it under contract. I'm going to pass it by my, my partner. Okay. 
and uh, and and then of of course I need uh, the information you had for the approval that you had before, right? And then. Mm -hmm. like the drawings yeah. and stuff like that right yeah drawing, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 but uh that's something that's very common in gillette so yeah but well, that's yeah. tough because uh, they take too long and uh, this my world anymore is not moving mm -hmm. and uh, i cannot do that because uh, my wife she's the one who was so help me she getting sick right now i'm in a hospital with her okay all and, right uh, and this is why we we stop and then my daughter, you know, they just, mm -hmm. when, he's, he's not, when the, my son-in-law is not moving, I say, I'm not going to help those, those people right now because uh, he's not moving. Gotcha. And I'm not going to put my money there. That's gotcha. why, you know. Gotcha. Do you, um, what's your email address? What's your best email address? Uh, I got an email address, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't have it. So oh. my... my why is this not for those uh, notes? You have email address. I'm sending you an offer. I'm sending you an offer in the email. First of all, is three fifty okay? Would you would you be okay with three fifty? Well, I gotta talk uh, with my my wife. You gotta talk to with your wife. How soon are you gonna talk to your wife? And uh, we talk with my brother also because he's the one that you know they help us and that thing. Uh, he's the one. Uh, who's Lino? Is that you? That's you, right? Lino, I'm Lino. Yeah. Okay, so you're the one on the title. Yes. Okay, but they they're all invested in the deal. I understand, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, do you want? Do you, do you need to talk to your wife? I understand that you need to talk to the people you need to talk to, right? Do you? How soon are you gonna do that? Okay. Uh, do you want me to follow up with you tomorrow? Um, wait. Yeah, if you want to call, call me tomorrow, you call me, then I get ready to give you the email. Okay. Okay. If your wife and your brother-in-law say yes, you're good to go at 350. Uh, I think it's a low, but... I mean, you asked for 375. I'm looking at the yeah, numbers. No, no, you don't pay me real estate commissions. I'm the buyer. Yeah, but I know that uh, we have to, because we, we, you know, when we put the price, it's for sale. It's not to play games. No, no, because I... Because sometimes people, they, they put 500 and they're going to sell it for, for 250, and then we're not doing that. No, 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 no. What I'm asking you is very simple. You need to sell the property, correct? Uh, um, no, more or less, yeah. Okay, if you need to sell the property, that's what I'm here to help you as a cute. That's it. It's as simple as that. If you don't need to sell the property, I will ask you if you have other properties to sell. It's really that simple, you know. No, I don't play games. I only need seven to ten days. Okay, I only need seven to ten days from you. Okay. All right. So if you talk to your brother-in-law and your wife, it's good at three fifty. Correct? If they have, if they agree, that's good. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow. We'll find out. Okay? All right, bye. So, you got to take charge when you're talking to those people. You have to take charge. Um, sometimes they're on the fence. Your confidence will push them over. This property, um, I know that area is high-end, okay? When I say high-end, you know... Um, it's giving it to us 375. I'm looking at the potential in that area. Property can sell for as much as 755. There's there's room to make something happen. Now, what exactly are we gonna make happen? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. And honestly, I don't know how, you know, not too sure how uh, motivated this guy is. The bottom line is that I will get him committed mentally, okay. And then, which he kind of did already, and then we'll call back tomorrow. Okay, it's nothing, nothing crazy there. Okay, so call back tomorrow. Tomorrow.
with wife and brother-in-law. All right, so let's let's talk about what the next question here is. One second. Let me set up a follow-up call. Uh, next question after asking what the condition of the property is, what kind of property is it, property type, condition. That's all on the condition. The next question that's very, very important for you is timeline, which is simply how soon do you need to sell, okay? Um, I have that answer here for this gentleman. He said anytime, so he's not in a rush, so we can't really use that. All right, the next question after that is motivation. Why do you need to sell? It says living to living at another house, but also he told me more. He was gonna build this house for his daughter. The daughter is moving out of state. Um, you know, those are all additional. Want to build for daughter. moving all right so those are all information I can use later how much he wants he wants 375 um, 375 Ola offered 350 ARV so actually 615 based on the present property so maybe we can add a square footage, you know, blah, 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 whatever we can do to it. On my numbers, actually, when I was looking at the cash offer section here, um, I don't know how much work that, it says it's a knockdown. If it's a knockdown, right? If it's a knockdown, um, I don't know, you know, my number needs to be at about 269, actually more like 160 something for that area my number needs to be at around 160 something but again i was just trying to lock him in psychologically mentally speaking and then we'll do some due diligence and you know we can always renegotiate but if he had given me that property at 150 it would be a ghost all right so it doesn't hurt we'll let him go talk to his uh, people we'll see about that uh let's call the next person here let's call antonio if we got a good offer, it can sell to us. Condition is good. If we got a good offer, it can sell to us. Again, copy, paste. Uh, what's going on with this guy? Let me see this property before I call. In Warren, New Jersey. Okay. Property is about, it's high end, $853,000. He bought it in 2004 at 359. Property is probably vacant. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's give it a call. Well, it's an iron property. So let's just see if there's any room there for anything before I worry about anything else. Seven five two thirteen hundred. Hello. Hi, may I speak to Antonio, please? Yes, I am. How you doing, Antonio? Um, you spoke to my assistant about uh, Mount Bethel Road. Your property? Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? Did I catch you at a good time? I'm sorry? Did I catch you at a good time? Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. No, no, I have a few questions. I have a few questions first. Well, what's the condition what's the condition of this property? It's very good. Uh, does it need any, any kind of repairs? Like new. No, no, no. No, oh like new, like brand new. Oh, you don't live there? No. Oh, so it's vacant right now? I'm 
So it's vacant right now. I said, so it's vacant right now. I said the property is empty, vacant right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, why is it vacant? Uh, one minute. Let me see. Okay. I am not sure now. I, I am not sure. But it's vacant. It's is uh, three minutes. It's, it's vacant. Okay. What, what's the bar park number that you want for it? What do you want? How much do you want for it? Oh, okay. L l do you do? You, yes, it's for me. I'm a private investor, and I buy properties for profit. Okay. Now, um, I, it's been vacant for for a while, so you you need to sell, right? Okay. All right. Um. I understand. For me? Are you talking about me? Where are you from? Well, I'm Nigerian American. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I speak just unfortunately just English for okay. for this part. Yeah. Um but I'll take it slow. So um what's the lowest you would take on the property? Right, right. That, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, again, I can see more than enough information on your property, and I'm an investor. I do this for a living. Okay, so I I can see more than enough information. I just wanted to have a few agreements before I come out. Is it for me? No, no, no. I'm an investor. I buy it so I can sell. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see, I can see, I can see your house on the internet. I can see the. Yeah, I, I will see. Don't no worries. I will see. I just need to see if I can come to some agreement with you first. Okay. When I want to go inside, as soon as we agree to a ballpark price. Okay. Okay. Once we agree to a ballpark price, then I would like to see. Okay. But I want to know what you want. I want to know if my offer is acceptable first. Okay. Would you would you would you consider five hundred thousand dollars? Mm -hmm. no. So tell me, so tell, so tell me what you want. Let me focus on what you want. Was that? So, so, so let me focus on what you want, Antonio. How much do you want for it? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I said, how much do you want? So we can focus on that. I have seen your house. I need to know how much you want for it. Have a good day. All right. So let's see here. Somebody is actually trying to call. All right, so that property is vacant. The property is actually worth 1.1, okay? I threw $500,000 at him. I don't know. Uh, property is in good condition. He probably thinks he has a gem. He probably does, um, you know. But again, it's not, it's not speaking very fluent English either. So it's, it's like pulling teeth, you know, trying to talk to him. So, <laughs> so I'm going to let that one uh, go. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, it was listed at, uh, let's see, it was listed at $833,000. So it probably was something close to that. Looks like it was listed at eight thirty, dollars Or maybe that's just a worth. Or that's just estimated worth. Yeah. Property is worth about $1.1 million.
you know so the idea of not speaking fluent english is uh you know that happens every now and then but at least they have to be willing to sell it i've closed deals with people that don't speak english before be because they were that motivated they kept calling me back you know so if we're lacking motivation and then we're lacking free flow of communication that's not a good combination so with that being said you know <laughs> we're gonna keep it moving excuse me all right so right now i think uh i got a few follow-ups to make uh we got uh, about three followers let's try to call madeline let's try to call madeline it's time 307 okay So we have one that we have to follow up with tomorrow. Seems like a good situation that, but you know, the numbers are a little bit off. I just gotta make sure that the subdivision was possible. If subdivision is possible, and remember the $615,000 house, that will be worth 1.2 instantly. He wants 375, it will be easy, okay? If subdivision is possible. If it's not, that number needs to come down to 150, 160, 170. Let's see here. So the the sixth question is why do you need to sell the motivation? The seventh question is the price. We need to know what they want. You notice I was asking a few times. All right. So all right, that person then pick up. Let's try the other lines. If you notice, I was calling quite a few times. You know, I mean, I was asking him quite a few times. What do you want? I need to know what he wants. If he doesn't tell me what he wants, if he doesn't tell me what he wants, then I'll be forced to throw maybe half of what I think is worth, which is why I threw five hundred thousand dollars at this recent guy. Uh, the property is worth one point one, but just to see and measure, basically, the idea is to kick them off the phone or draw them back further to you, right? If they're motivated, they'll be like, "No, no, 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 no. I need at least." this much right if they say that then you know that there's some level of motivation it's never an exact science it's an art and a science it's the heart and science of finding deeply discounted properties that's what wholesaling is right so just keep that in mind let's try the other line here all right so that's the last question step the seven price you need to know what they want if they don't tell you what they want don't hesitate throw them an offer af or 40% of what the property is worth based on what you can see. So obviously you will need the tools to be able to see what that property is worth. When you're prospecting, when you're talking to people, you need to see what that property is worth. If you don't, if you can't, take down the information and call them back. And you can also do Hello, may I speak to Madeline, please? Yes, may I speak to Madeline? Wrong number, thank you. All right, so that's the wrong number. We gotta delete that prop that number off. Let's try the other last one here. No one is picking up. Let me see what this property is worth. Four oh one and it's vacant. Power records. Oh yeah, I remember this property in Morristown. Hmm. Wait, have I spoken to this person before? Oh yeah, the person wanted me to follow up at five o'clock on that day. I 
All right, no pickup. So let's move on. Answer. I will set up the next follow up. Let's call Ahmed. Let's try to get Ahmed on the phone. He wants to talk to you about the offer. He wants to talk to you about the offer. Okay. May I speak to Ahmed, please? Yes, How you doing, Ahmed? I'm calling about your property in Fairlawn. This is Ola. You spoke to my assistant a few days ago. Yes. How you doing? Did I catch you at a good time? Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm driving right now. I'm working. I'll call you on Monday? Okay, this is Ola. I'll call you personally on Monday at around 2.30, 3 o'clock, okay? Uh, okay, Let, let's do it Saturday. Saturday? Yes. Okay. I'll call you Saturday. Thank you. Bye. I'll see if I can call him on Saturday. <laughs> uh, once the call Saturday. All right. And then let's set up a follow up call for Saturday. Saturday is the 20th. We'll see. Let me put this on. Uh, do you want a specific time? Let me put it at. Uh, I'll put that at 9 a.m. So let's see. If I don't call by Saturday, I'll just call on Monday. I usually try to take Saturdays off. All right, I think, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, let's call Diane. Let me see something. Saturday here is on the 20th. Let me make this a high priority. High priority means they're warm. They want to talk, basically. That's all it means. Doesn't mean it's going to close. Doesn't mean anything, actually, in reality. But I like to see that based on how I gauge the call in the beginning. All right, so let's call Diane. That's the last follow-up that we have for the day. Let's see. Now, if you're here and you're brand new, make sure you download the smartrealestatewholesaling.com. That's where you want to go to grab this. It's free PDF. It's also available in paper, like this, Kindle, and audiobook. Um, it's a... <sighs> Hello, hi. May I speak to Diane, please? Okay. Hi, how are you? My name is Ola. I think you spoke to my assistant on uh, on the 12th about your property in Lincoln Park. Okay. Yes. Uh, we were... You expressed all, You expressed our interest in our offer? Well, no. They made me an offer. They made you an offer? Oh, okay, yeah. That was the idea of me calling you now, so I can make you an offer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the condition of the property? Excellent. You said excellent? Yeah. Oh, so I said like no need for any kind of repairs? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. A hardwood floor was put in a year and a half ago. Fully painted a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So why do you want to sell? If I get it because of price, um, and I was recently... Disabled, so if I can move and I get a good price, I'll move. Oh, okay. And this is a townhouse? No, it's a condo. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry, a condo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, on, the, on the legal descriptions, they call them townhomes. But um, yeah. thank you. Uh, so how much do you want for it? Do you have an idea? I'm not going to bid against myself. Say that again? I'm not going to bid against myself. You tell me. <laughs> You don't want to debate against yourself. Well, here's the deal. I'm an investor, right? And I, and I like to focus on what you want. That way I don't waste your time. 
you know what I mean? So okay. that's why I'm asking if you have an idea of how much you want, and then I'll, I'll see what kind of options I have available uh, based on that. All right, well, look, then let me do a little research this evening, mm -hmm. and then call me back tomorrow, and I'll have a number for you. Okay, perfect. I'll do that. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. So, she wants to do her research. You see how that the direction of that conversation is not a usual one, right? It's usually, no, I'm just making an offer, you know. But she wants to do her research. She's she like a particular person. She's going to do her research. She's going to find out what she wants. Basically, what I can see that that property is worth here. Let me take a close look. Windsor Drive. That property is worth probably. It's worth. Uh, let me see here. Let me submit. It's a condo. So that property in recent times, uh, one of them sold in March. Same exact size, a little bit smaller, by ten square footage, one sixty-five. Okay. 165 and uh, let's see here they have a bigger version sold for 275 but it's 350 it's a lot bigger property is worth 160 okay so I wonder what she's gonna want for it uh, she doesn't seem like she's motivated I'm just gonna schedule a call to call out tomorrow how that uh, wants to research Want to research call tomorrow? What's the research value? See, I could have discussed that with her on the phone if she was a little calmer, but the energy was a little bit on a pace, on a fast pace. So, I'm gonna follow schedule follow for tomorrow. Ask him. So that's why you want to learn how to just feed off of people's energy um, and see the direction they're going um, because it's going to help your conversation. If you have your pre notion idea, you have you get ready, you prepare. Of course, you should prepare, you should have the seven questions handy, but you should also feed off of their energy, you know, because that's going to help you communicate. You should study them and see where they're operating from. That's going to help you. All right. So that's what I was doing. That's why I keep saying this is a heart just as much as it's a science. Okay. The science part of it is question number one, the greetings. You need to say hello and make sure you're talking to the right person. Step number two, ownership. Do they own the property that you're calling about? Step number three, you want to know if they're open to selling. Okay, they're open to a cash offer. Step number four, question number four, AKA question number four. You want to know the condition of the property, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, blah, blah, blah. And the question number five is how soon do they need to sell? They, it, it needs to be ASAP. Like Diane says, ASAP. That's a good one. That's a good motivation right there. All right, so I may offer a cash offer. Listen, you know, I buy this so I can sell it. Are you, you know, are you open to a cash offer? It's going to be a little bit less. Or if you want to list it on the market. You have time, right? A motivation, Diane is not living in the property. She doesn't leave there. She's trying to move, actually. So this is uh, error. Error. So she is um, disabled and would like to move. And would like to move. To move. Let me make sure that I put this here because I need to correct this, guys. So, and then seventh price, and then we got stock on price, right? Because I'm asking her how much she wants. And, you know, if she was a little calmer, energy was a little slower, I would have been like, why don't we discuss the numbers, you know? But, okay, let me do the research, okay? Sure, give her what she wants. <laughs> Go do the research and we'll come back to it, right? So that's how that works. And uh, so basically we're all caught up on, uh, I'm caught up on my follow-ups assigned to me here. And, uh, We'll talk a little bit here okay if you want 
to learn this game. Uh, there's so many wholesalers coming into the game, okay? And majority of them are not taking the time to master the skills needed to do this. A lot of them are buying into the idea of YouTube University. YouTube University is awesome if you already know what you're doing. Like, for example, you could watch me right now. You could brush up your skills a little bit more. You could take one little idea away from me, not the 100% of my idea, but a little bit of nuggets here and there. You can run with it, and then you can sharpen your sharpen up your own skills, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are completely brand new in this game and you depend on YouTube University, um, that's a big mistake because here's why. Here's why, okay? Yes, there are people that have gone through YouTube University and done well. There's no question about that. For an average person, either they do YouTube University or not, they're not going to do well. All right. So the best thing you can do for yourself when you take something serious is to invest in yourself. That's really the best thing you can do, honestly. You know, and that's why I put this book together. So go grab it. SmartRealEstateWholesaling.com. That's where you want to go. Grab a free PDF. It's also available in a book, so you can mark it up if you want. And uh, available in audiobook and Kindle. It's a book that you need to read 10 to 15 times because it will help your mindset from a digital era standpoint on how you should approach this business. You see, the cream will always rise to the top. Okay? That's the bottom line. So there's no such thing as wholesaling is saturated. No, that's not really a real thing. Okay? However, there's a lot of quote unquote wanna be wholesalers in the game. Some of them will call us trying to get in the property. They make up uh bogus uh what do you call it? Bogus um proof of funds trying to get in properties, trying to get in every single property as opposed to understand the, the game of speed, you know. And um you know some of them uh there's just a lot going on, okay? And the best way for you to become the cream that rises to the top is to make sure that you invest in yourself, in your education, and learn this game. And then, personally, I recommend that you partner with someone that's already doing it so you can learn and basically uh, you can cheat, right? It's an it's a easy cheat sheet for, you, for yourself. And that's what I recommend, okay? Yes, I do recommend YouTube University to continue to sharpen up your skills as well. But as far as if you don't know what you're doing already, um, if you're the one calling everyone up just to get into properties and you know you don't have the money, then you're missing the most important part of the value that you can bring to the game. So the key thing I always tell people, which is part of the what's in this book, is three pillars. You know, the, it's called Smart Real Estate Wholesaling, the three pillars of a real estate wholesaling empire in the modern age, right? In the modern age, the idea is to lead with value. That's the pillar number one, right there. Okay, and you should always be thinking that if everything you're doing in any given moment in time is taking value away from other people, like for example, you're bothering people that have other wholesalers that have that are actually actively having houses listed, and you're calling them to get in the properties, and you know you're not gonna buy. That's basically not adding value to other people, and you're gonna burn yourself up because. It's a small world at the end of the day. That's why I said there's no such thing as saturation. There's saturation at the bottom of the ocean. Everybody that's acting at the bottom, basically all the people that all the people that are going through YouTube University and just making a fool of themselves, of course, that place is crowded. But the people that understand the game of entrepreneurship and business and understand how they can bring value to others are uh, operating at a higher level. And the best way for you to get to that higher level is to invest in your own education. Uh, and no, I don't have a $20,000 program to sell to you right now. I'm just telling you, you need to invest in yourself. That's just the bottom line, okay? So it could be books. It could be whatever you want to do, but you need to you need to hone your skills because this is going to take skills, okay? And it's, it's taking more skills now than ever before because, again, everyone, their moms and their pops are wholesalers now. The only way to stand out, which you must stand out, is to invest in your own self and then... It's about you. It's going to be you. The only thing that sets you apart from the next old sellers is you. So if you hone your own skills and sharpen yourself up and the way you show up, the way you carry yourself in this game, uh, it will show up and people will respect you. Even the, um, even the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, what you call it? Even the cash bias in the game will respect you. You won't need cash bias per se. 
the, the cash buyers will need you because you're not just some random wholesaler who went to YouTube University and all, obviously is just spamming everyone with email, text messages, and all the softwares that's out there right now. Listen, I'm telling you, there's a lot of tools out here. It's technology driven tools out here but if you become just another wholesaler you're not going to learn how to use it to add value to other people other professionals in the game you're going to be a nuisance and people will run away further away from you right so that's a this is this uh this a science to this madness and i recommend i encourage that you learn it so you can stand out okay uh because eventually you know like everything else everything that goes up will come down the only thing that's don't the only things that don't come down that will never come down is the cream they always rise to the top and um all right so hopefully that was something that that will be very helpful in the way you approach your business as we move forward you can start with this smart real estate wholesaling.com if i said anything that made sense if you enjoyed the session please make sure you give it a thumbs up thank you thank you it helps us okay that's one way you can help me that's the list you can do for me okay all right uh hopefully you've been enlightened and educated we'll see you on the next one and peace